Hello, so today I'm going to walk you through this little assignment on manufacturing uh, for a CNC machine. Uh, the first thing, you're going to get these two pieces, the little uh, box thingy. So the, the default box and then the, the Formula 1 uh, actual end piece. Uh, and you're going to assemble them, so make sure you're in, you have the assemblies uh, ticked in. And then on the under file, and you're gonna go to mm, you're gonna go to manufacturing. I'm already in manufacturing, but if I go to I don't know drafting, um, you know it's gonna show up here. So if it doesn't show manufacturing, you're already in the proper application, uh, and it's gonna say up here. So once you have that done, the next step will be to go to the operation navigator, and you're not gonna have probably any programs. So you're gonna create a new program. And I'm gonna call it that because uh, I don't really care what its name is. And we're gonna create an operation. And the and and the thing is, like uh, a program can have multiple operations. So this is one operation, and then this is the another operation from the bottom, and then in the contour area, um, you know, to give it a more a more detail. Um, and then what's really important is that if it's here. Uh, you know, it's smart enough to know that, uh, you know, if, if we're doing this operation, uh, it knows we already removed this stuff from before, so if we go to verify and 3D, and if it doesn't lag, it, you're going to see that it's going to start already pretty much cut. So you can see it's already cut, and, uh, and you know, I have these wide gaps, but, you know, because it's a real machine, it's going to end up uh, being falling off and stuff, you know. So we don't really worry much about that. Um, so how to create a, uh, an operation is you press the operation button, which is here. The program is, is here, uh, by the way. So you create a program, and you tell it where is it going to be. It's going to be in program uh, one or whatever program you're using. The tool, we can ignore this. Uh, the geometry, make sure to select workpiece. It's just going to make our lives easier later on. And then uh, the method mill rough, so it's a, a very quick uh, pass. And then the way I did it is uh, a cavity mill to quickly remove the material, and then a contour area to give more detail. So I'm going to create first the contour mill. And the way you do it is pretty simple. You go to workpiece and try to go in an order from top to bottom. So edit the workpiece and uh, specify part. Make sure you select the Formula 1, which is the, this little end piece. And the blank is the material that you know that goes initially into the machine that's going to be uh, modified. Uh, you can give a description or whatever, um, and then I don't know what the message is. I'm just gonna press OK. Then we're gonna go to our tool, uh, and you create tools, and you need to create them with this button, and be sure to make the difference that this is a mill, you know, a flat planar mill. This is a chamfer mill, and this is the ball mill. Uh, chamfer is when you have a, a corner that's uh, you know straight. The ball mill is going to give you a, a smooth uh, curve. So just make sure you differentiate between these two. So I'm going to use a flat mill to for the first time, and I'm going to make this tool pretty fat, uh, so that uh, you don't have to do. So that's probably your right, Terry. Seventy five. You know, you need to use the specifications that you're given. Um, and then the axis, you know, you can just specify vector it is in the wrong axis. Uh, so mine is going to be uh, up, so it's this one, you know, so yeah, that's that's cool. So, you know, the machine is going to be coming on, on top. And then we already can select again the, the, the method, so it's going to be rough. And then the cut pattern is how it's going to create the trajectory for the tool. So I'm going to change to zigzag, or you can just follow, but you can just play with it and see the times that they give you. So next, I'm going to go to percent flat diameter, is how much is going to overlap from the same tool. 50% is a good value, you can use, uh, you know, you can tell it to only overlap like 5%, but you're going to end up, uh, your tool is going to go bad quicker. And then this is important, the cut levels. So when I go to the tool, the flood length, which is where the length where I have an edge, is 50 millimeters, which means in the cut levels. 
I can put a maximum distance step of 50 millimeters. So if you see, I have like many little steps here, which is gonna be very time consuming. I can just tell you like 45 and be within the range, and you can see how this change. So that's good. That's cool. And another important thing, you know, cutting patterns. You know, you can. Yeah, we don't really have to worry much about that stuff. Um, Non-cutting pattern, so what it does when it's on top, when when the machine, when the tool is on the upper stuff, and you know you can be more precise about these values. Uh, fits and speeds is important. Be sure. I'm not sure which values you're giving, but uh, there's a quick way to get this. So I think it was something like 250. I, I don't know. I don't know. Just I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna go with 180. And then the spindle speed is gonna be. It's gonna be, um, I don't know, I'm gonna, I guess uh, 150, why not? So now I press the calculator, and it's gonna calculate the stuff for me, and I press OK. And I have no idea what those values are, uh, you know, you have to do the math yourself. Um, then we don't have to worry about any of these. Program, which program is gonna be under, be sure that it's your proper program. If not, you can just drag them up. So then you're gonna generate them, and it's gonna go through the whole process, and it's gonna build traces and some blah, blah, blah. And it's gonna take some time. And once that's done, you're gonna have an operation. So I recommend at this stage to press OK once it's done. So you, we you see like I have all of these paths. So press OK just to be sure it saves and also save your work. It's important. And I have a little bit of a bug in this, I don't know why. So I need to move this program on top, otherwise the the blank piece is gonna look pretty fucked up. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is, oops, oops, I'm gonna double click this again, just to be able to, s you, you know, you can modify the values here in case you just screw up. So verify, important, then press this thingy, and then you can just, I'm gonna put this here, it's gonna lag a little bit on my PC, or not actually, because, yeah, apparently when it's on the lower program, when I did some tests, it's gonna lag more. But you can see, well, it's not responding very much. But yeah, you can see it's now doing the whole operations. And I believe you, well, I'm gonna press the stop for now. You can watch it go completely. But I believe you're asked a whole bunch of data. So, sorry. So you get a lot of information here. So you get the information in the tool whenever there's a tool change this icon pops up and the time so you can see here that um, this operation that I just made is uh, five hours uh, compared that to this one which is five hours and fifty minutes so this operation is a little bit better in respect to time uh, like I said if you're not happy with the time uh, you know you can change the cutting pattern and maybe play with the overlapping. So if we make this like a, I don't know, whatever. You know, you can play with that stuff later on. Um, so then one of the problems that I see many times is that sometimes you guys will create an operation and then you fuck up here and you press none in the program. And let's say it's a fixed contour. No, I need a contour area. Contour area, this is the one. So you guys will fuck up and, uh, and do that. And then when you tell the specific check, when you tell the cutting area, oh yeah, that's pretty annoying here. Um, I'm gonna need to remove this block here. Um, you know, you need to select all of this stuff in the contour area, the stuff that's gonna be cutting. And so, and yeah, you know, you can select this bit just to make sure it smooths out there, you know. So anyways, you do all of this stuff, you select the tools and everything and you la, 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 and everything here and you make sure it just it right and then you create the operation. But you screw up and uh, and what you end up seeing is that it's going to redo this whole step you did before in the cavity mill one here. And the reason is because you didn't set it up in the program, in the correct program. So let us wait for it to finish. Um, so you know, the, the machine is, the, the tool is gonna, like, you know, if I preview this in 3D dynamic, you're, gon you're not gonna see the whole block already cut with this operation. I'm gonna make this go slow, just to prove my point. 
So yeah, you see like, hey, it's, it's the whole thing there, what the hell. But we just press, I'm going to press cancel quickly in here. It's pretty laggy. I don't know why it's super laggy. So yeah, uh, the way to fix that is you, you don't need to delete or anything. You can just press OK. And just drag it down and put it below in the correct order. And then you're going to go to generate. You can just press it here. You don't need to open up the properties. Just just going to make our life quicker. And uh, the next time I go to the 3D view, uh, we're going to see that it's going to, you know, it's going to look properly. It's going to be proper. It's been 10 minutes already. I think it's going to, I'm going to try to end it soon. So yeah, verify, and then when I go to 3D dynamic and that, uh, and you're going to see that, yeah. So that's the, how it was, and then how it's going to end. I can probably edit the tool so that it ends up being smoother. So if we look at the one I made here, this is what mine looks like. And I didn't do the 3D, sorry. So here we go, 3D. So the little blue, so hopefully it, it should be overlapping. That means that we have a completely, you know, it will mean that they're overlapping, you know. It's fighting for the same C value, so it's pretty good. It's not ideal, I, I think, but it's pretty good. You know, it's still, it depends also on the computer, how it renders these uh, polygons. So yeah, that's basically how you do this manufacturing stuff. And then you need to do the post-process. The post-process, make sure you select it from the whole program, and then post-process, and then I believe you need to select, I think it was a mill tree axis, and then be sure to, you know, set this stuff properly, and, and whatever, I don't know, it was, oh yeah, the units, so yeah, metric, make these metrics, and blah, 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 and then okay. Do you want to continue? Cancel. I don't think... You know, just make sure the units are properly made. Um, output warning, review tool. Yeah, it's just, it's just okay. Okay. In the first line, do you want to overwrite? No, I don't want to overwrite. I'm going to rename it just to be sure it's something different. Manu to... Yeah. Okay. Okay. And... It should pop up. If it's anything like NX 8.5, it should pop up. So yeah, this is a kind of very quickly uh, run through video. Um, so here it is. And the, this seems to be all right. You know, it's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty big piece. So, you know, you know, this is going to be one meter and 1.2 meters. So it makes sense. And then we have the information here and stuff, and, and you can edit this G code and whatever. So yeah, it's uh, it's fun. So if you guys have any questions, you can send me an email or whatever, and I'll probably read it. So yeah, I hope this helps and uh, it solves your questions. Bye.